Bach Chacon is a monument, is a statue. Is, uh, it is uh, one of the most important pieces in the history of music. All the violinists I know are obsessed with this piece and not only violins. Violinist. I am also uh, very much like the piece is, is, is too little for, for what I think of this piece. It's just perfectly in the way it's written. And uh, the universal elements in it are so powerful that it is enchanting even after um, 300 years, almost years that it was written. Um, and um, every time I play the Chacon, I feel I discover something new, a little new hidden melody, a new connection between phrases. Uh, and this is just endless of, of contra points and, and, and information in a way that makes it so such a whole piece. Uh, for the mandolin, I choose a very different interpretation that probably what people are used to here with the violin. Um, and uh, this is another unique um, quality of Bach. He's such a powerful composer that even if you play it on piano instead of a harpsichord or on tuba instead of something else, you still immediately hear that this is Bach, you know it's Bach and it's as powerful. And so with the Chacon and the mandolin, it gives you a whole new perspective, hopefully, on the Chacon. For example, just one little for example, out of many, how to adapt a piece written for the uh, violin on mandolin. So the first theme, the main theme of the Chacon are chords of three or four uh, notes at the same time. So on the violin, in order to play three notes or four notes at the same time, you kind of have to break the chords into two in order to make kind of this movement with the bow ta -pum, pa -pum, pa -pum, yeah, to have um, the full uh, four notes of the chords. With mandolin you, you don't have to because with the mandolin you, you can play three and even four notes at the same time. Uh, and this is how I start the Chacon, just very in, with a very clear rhythmical agenda as it's written in the notes. Um, this is one of the things that kind of I changed what um, I used to have in my ear and people probably are used to uh, the way they used to hear it uh, and kind of to give it, yeah, a more, in this sense, rhythmical clarity, at least in the first couple of uh, um, variations. <laughs>